Create a trading platform in Python part 9b, the second part of the bracket order. And this is where we left off. Okay, now I'm going to paste that uh, method in here. The method that is called from um, when you press buy or sell buttons. Place bracket order. First we create the contract. And the contract, um, we need the symbol, the security type, the exchange, the primary exchange, and the currency. And so we call that function, which is down here. Where are you? Create contract, and that returns the contract. Okay, and then we get um, from the bracket buy or bracket sell method, we get the action to buy or sell. That's stored in the buy sell variable. And the transmit variable, um, we set that to zero. Time and force is day. Parent ID is set to an empty string. And limit price, we get that from the, the form on the second page of the notebook for the bracket order in the entry box for the limit price that we set. Then we change it to a decimal and you have to import decimal. So you have to put from decimal import decimal. Uh, back at the top of the at the top of this file this Python file where we declare where we put all our imports at the beginning of the program okay so then we round it off to two decimal places and then we change it into a string and store it as the limit price in this variable and the auxiliary price we set to an empty string because we don't use it for the limit um, buy or sell for the entry order. Okay, then we use all that stuff to create our order bracket order. And that method is down here. Okay, that's right here, and all this information is passed, and the order is returned. Okay, so that's done, and then we, from the entry order, we get the order type, whether it was a buy or a sell. Then we create the stop and limit orders and only transmit the last order, which is the stop order. This activates the parent order. Also attach the parent ID to the limit and stop orders. And the tick is the, how large the uh, price move there is. And stocks usually use one cent price moves if you're using futures and whatnot. Some of the ticks are 25 cents or 50 cents. Okay, and then we, the price type, whether it's buy or sell. Do that twice. Oh, that's the order type whether it's market or limit. And this is whether it's a buy or sell, the price type. And the distance is the distance we're using for the profit target and the stop loss. Say if it's 1% or 10 cents above the entry price, but we're using percentages, so it'll be like 1% above the entry price for the target and 1% below the entry price for the stop loss. And then we get the quantity from the first order 
um, how many shares and store that in quantity. This um, order type, it checks to see whether it's market or limit order. If it's market, it does all this stuff. So if it's a market order, it has to determine what the whether if it's a buy to use the ask price as the entry price or use the bid for the entry price if it's a like a short. Based on that, if it's a buy, it does this calculation. If it's a sell, it does this calculation. And okay. So then if it's a limit order, it uses the limit price that we set on our form and the limit price entry box. Okay. So if it's a buy, it does this set of calculations. And if it's a sell, it does this set of calculations. Moving on, if the parent order is sell, then change to buy for the next two orders. The stop order and the profit target limit order. Okay, so if the entry order action is sell then we use buy action to take if entry order is sell for the next two orders okay okay so then we get the parent order id on the first order and then we get the, or set the auxiliary price to an empty string because we don't use it for the profit target or limit order. And change the order type to limit or make sure it's set to limit. And the time and force is day and set the transmit equal to zero or false. Then we create the bracket order. And that method is called, which I showed you earlier, and below here. Okay, and then we move on to the stop order. And we use that same order ID for the parent ID. And set the stop order type, or, you know, to stop. And and then we put the limit price to an empty string because we don't need it for the stop loss. And then set the transmit to 1. And this should be the last order. And this should trigger all the rest of the orders when it's triggered. And then we call the create order bracket order again. Okay, so then we place all those orders. We place the entry order first. Then we increase the order entry ID by one. Then we place the limit order and increase the order ID by one again. And then we place the stop order and increase the order ID by one again. Okay, and another way you can do that is with a loop. And I'll show you that now. Instead of doing it this way, we can do this as a loop. Okay, we can, basically we need to declare an empty list and then add entry order, the limit order, and the stop order to the list. And then we can loop through each one and place the order and then increase the order ID by one every time it loops through. That's a different way of doing it. it still works the same. So go down to your tick event. Okay. 
Okay, where is that? Okay, right here. We gotta change the ticker ID. So we gotta make an if statement. Okay, so when we request data for the first thing on our notebook, which is the main trading window, um, the ticker ID is zero. So we want to keep that separate. So I'm going to do an if statement to check for that, the ticker ID. I'm going to put that in here. If message ticker ID is equal to zero. Then we could do this. Um, check for the bid price, ask price, and last price based on the field number. And this will be for the first part, the main trading window. So got to keep that separate. Have to indent it. Message. Ticker ID is equal to 2. So that when we request the data for the bracket order, uh, we use the ticker ID of 2. So it's going to check for that number. And based on that, we're going to put a bunch of if statements based on the last uh, bid and ask. Okay, this will put the, what is it, the last price in the bracket order window on the second page of the notebook. This will put the bid price, and this will be the, the ask price. So just make sure yours looks like mine. I can put in here... Ticker ID for bracket orders. Ticker ID for main trading notebook page. Okay, I'm ready to try it now, so go to run and connect. Go to the bracket order tab here and click on Facebook and click in, say, the bid price and select the price and then just hit buy and your order goes through here. Now, if you want to cancel it, you can hit the cancel here. I think it'll cancel whichever one you click on because they're all connected. Okay, and there's another... Oh, it triggered. So, we're in the trade now. And so, whichever one hits, the stop or the limit, it'll cancel the other one. And so you don't have to manage it yourself. The system at TWS, Interactive Brokers, will manage that for you. Okay, so I'm going to make it trigger one of them. So you'll see. And you can also use your chart to change the price or you can change the price here if you want. Let's see. 132.37. Change that. Okay. 
update. So whichever one hits, it'll cancel the other one out. Out of your profit target or stop loss. You can also change the price on your chart. Like I showed in a previous video demonstration of how this bracket order thing works. Okay, the stop loss was hit. And it canceled the other order, the profit target. So that's how a bracket order works. Okay, please like and subscribe, share with friends, comment. And if you missed any of the code, that'll be on my website, sharpertradingimage.com. And thanks again. Bye.